All right, what's up, y'all? Take a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we're here to talk about how the passing lane patch has completely changed the meta in NBA 2K22 Next Gen, especially the big man spots. So we're gonna be showcasing 2v2 gameplay first, then 3v3 gameplay. I'm gonna be just kind of talking over this stuff. This is more so meant to be kind of background gameplay, but there will still be a lot of points to be made in terms of the passing lanes not being played by either team, whether it be my point guard or the two people on the court that have the high steal rating on their team. So. You're going to see pretty much just judging by their builds right here. You see the stretch playmaker, two-way playmaker. You're going to see all types of builds like this. Almost every single time you hop on this 2v2 court, at least in my experience, you will always see at the point guard spot, someone who's around six foot three to six foot six. And then at the two spot, you're going to always see someone who's around six foot seven to six foot nine. It's literally the exact lineup that I see every single time. Double ISO, never run pick and roll, never set any screens, never do any pick and pop, or just like I said, any pick and roll in general at that. You never see tall bigs out here. You never see post scores or anything like that all i ever see is double iso i'm here to talk about how that has kind of been shifted a little bit and i think you're going to see a lot more people kind of bring back their tall bigs because i think a lot of people can agree with me on this when i say that i have a seven footer and a seven foot three that i created both of them honestly around i would say november december something like that and honestly i thought both those builds were very good i saw these seven footers and seven threes were crazy on the rebounding the shot blocking was insane they still move pretty good in terms of speed the one thing that really made them not quite up to par in terms of the other builds in this game is definitely the passing lanes and now that they have been nerfed to an extent and especially the hall of fame interceptor and the 90 steel plus thresholds and stuff like that i think you're gonna see a lot more of these tall bigs come out here and again stuff like this bro we're here to talk about how i really don't think this is good for the game this is a horrible pass to be made it's not kitchen's fault his dude is just ducking down as he's tapping the x button and again i think some people on my comments thought that i was over here getting frustrated because i have a build that is now 6 9 and i made it just for the hall of fame interceptor or some of the people don't even know what builds i have and they just clicked on the video for the first time ever on my channel and they just assume they just assumed that i was interceptor made or something like that listen bro before that build i literally didn't even have anything that had hall of fame interceptor in this game I was sitting here on these tall bigs with like silver and bronze. Now, I'm not going to lie. We were getting done bad by these guys. I'm not really showcasing the best parts of the gameplay. You can see I'm over here getting backdoored. Kitchen's getting backdoored. Again, it's things like the interceptor that we're talking about in this video, but I want to talk about ISO defense. You're going to see me actually still another bad aspect right here. I get stunned and then he just shoots an early. So honestly, it's not the best display. It's not the best showcase or anything like that of how I can really play defense on this build, but I want to just showcase really just the truth to it all. I'm not picking out and being selective with what gameplay I want to show. I'm just showing y'all straight up a 2v2 gameplay and a 3v3 gameplay. Like I said, this is more so meant to be background gameplay, and I'm just going to be talking on how I think the game is going to be influenced in terms of the meta at the big man spot, and honestly, the guard spot may be a little bit as well. I will tell you guys this much. I want to talk about the guard position first. Honestly, I think these small guards, like the five nines and stuff like that, they are done for on 2v2. That was the only thing that could protect them in terms of this entire game. Like their defense is really, really bad in terms of trying to stick ball handlers, get bumps on them and stuff like that. Obviously the pluck steals and like going for the on ball steals wasn't really good in the first place. And they're still not amazing. They're definitely getting better though. I will say that much in terms of comparing it in season four to what it was for the majority of season three and season two. As you guys can see, this gameplay is from season three, but it was after the patch as well. This will be the last time that I have any season three gameplay as well. But anyway, the small guards, they're really definitely done for on the 2v2. I think they're still going to be good on Pro-Am, but I still have yet to see that because I'm not going to lie. It is hard. It's going to be real hard for them to protect themselves and stop themselves from getting backdoored and just be able to protect themselves in terms of the passing lanes. It was the only thing they had going for them to stop people from picking on them on D. <laughs> and honestly, it's probably a good thing. I think those builds did need to get nerfed in some way. You guys hear me all the time in my videos talking about how stupid it is that the five nines are so dominant and they really have no weakness. And again, the passing lanes allowed them to not have that weakness. Now, next up, let's talk about kind of the lockdown position. So you're going to see builds like Kitchens or the one that Kitchen is being guarded by, or even the guy who is matched up on me, who clearly has around a six foot eight to six foot nine build, might even has the, have the six nine glitch metric. I'm not exactly sure, but either way, he probably has something around that nature. And again, he can't play that passing lane right there. He's late for it. And the, the game isn't going to like animate him into that. And I think that's a good thing too. Honestly, for 2v2, especially for the inbound, this is a saving grace thing. I think it's really good for the game in terms of the 2v2 aspect. I'm starting to kind of wake up to it a little bit as well for 3v3. I kind of get what you guys are saying in terms of the people that were on board with this patch. I do get what you guys are saying. I do think though, they went a little bit overboard with it. I think they definitely shouldn't have gone so hard on the X deals as they did. I 
will say though, I'm a huge fan of the LT auto steals being taken out of the game. I think that's a very smart thing to do. It really made it so from a, a whole different level of perspectives when it came to passing lanes, whether it was two guys playing up on my point guard and they would sit here and double team him and hold LT and just pray for an on ball passing lane, whether that's pro am 3v3, whatever the case may be, it's literally just threeing up and just putting two guys up on my guard and hoping for an on ball passing lane. And then again, things like corner def defense where people aren't even tapping their X button and they're just getting LT lanes, whether it's passing from wing to corner, wing to corner right here, or just paint the corner, wherever the case may be. Same with on the backside as well, if you dropped back a little bit and held your LT. Again, I don't like that stuff. I don't like the LT lanes being like an auto steal in the first place. I hated that. And I'm glad that I got taken out. But I do think they went just a bit overboard when it came to X lanes, to be honest with you guys. I am learning a little bit though. I might even have a video for it. I will give you guys a nice little tip or a tidbit of information that I'm gonna put in that video. But I'm learning the best way to play passing lanes now is to not even hold your LT at all. I'm starting to realize that even just holding your LT at all actually makes it so you can't get any passing lanes at all. <laughs> they literally removed it entirely. So I'm sure a lot of people were on board with this in the past where you would hold LT and still tap your X button. I think some of us may have underestimated how many of those were LT lanes that they were giving us because we're still tapping the X button at the right time. But at the end of the day, I'm really realizing now they completely removed the LT steals entirely. Like you can't even get X lanes while you're holding LT anymore. But anyway, back to the topic of the video, you guys can see the build is literally horsing down low. I mean, it's kind of going crazy. We're also going to showcase a little bit on the 3v3 gameplay too, some of the really good rebounding early on. But again, it's not really like me nitpicking certain games or anything like that. I just wanted to showcase to you guys a straight up 2v2 gameplay against some decent comp. I will say though, I find this inbound hilarious. Like it's so bad for these guys. It's not even funny. You're going to see I sit right here. He lurks up in front of the lane. This dude, literally the ball grazes past his head. He taps the X button a little bit too late. I do understand. I'm not gonna lie. This is actually a good thing for the game to an extent. He taps his X button a bit too late. Obviously, if he was sitting here spamming X like everybody should on the 2v2, if you're going to lurk up like that, he probably would have got this, to be honest with you, or at least tipped it. I'm not going to lie. I've seen some situations where that's literally just ends up a tip and you're just getting screwed by the game. Then you're going to see I come out here, the triple threat move. Boom. He jumps. It is what it is. That's game over. But Next up, when we get into 3v3 gameplay, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the hybrid locks or the taller bigs. We've already talked about how the game is going to influence the smaller guards, how I think this is really going to hurt them to an extent on a defensive end. On the offensive end, it's definitely more easy for them to pass the ball and be more manageable with that. I think it definitely helps the worst guards who couldn't create their own shot and demand a double team to the point where they just get their big man wide open. If you're someone who's not exactly the best guard, but you're definitely still good enough, you can be able to just work the offense really easy now. If they set, if they set up like single teams on you and then still hedge pretty high and you just like to pass a little bit more than the average guard would then you as well are definitely benefiting off this patch now to go back to the kind of like hybrid locks or the taller big discussion in terms of how this is going to affect the meta i think you honestly are going to see a lot more variety i think the game was definitely leaning toward the six nine metric builds taking completely over like when it came to the lockdown position the big man position i even advocated for it super hard i i just call it as it is to be honest with y'all and again i thought it was gonna be really cool to hop on a build like that but at the end of the day i think you guys are right i think this game did need a little bit of balance in terms of that because again it does sound pretty crazy for me to come out here and vouch for people running two six nines at the two and the three just sides everything sit here in the passing lanes go crazy flick your hands up and just literally get every single passing lane when it comes to that i think you guys make a good point with that i think there needs to be a little bit more variety in terms of taller bigs seeing a little bit more utility when it comes to 3v3 2v2 they're definitely still super valid in pro-am and they always have been and, and all types of stuff like that right here you can see he gets the tip passing lane i'm over here checking it over to tonic tonic's gonna do some crazy stuff like this is a very unconventional way for us to start in terms of our 3v3 offense. You're gonna see though, Tonic draws two defenders. I hit the fake pass. They both jump at the same time. I get a nasty standing dunk. And this is what I think these seven footers are gonna be elite for. I think you're gonna see a lot more people implement pick and roll offense, actually passing to their teammates and stuff like that as well. You can see I had a 31% contest right there. Tonic crashes off the corner with his 6-9 metric. So you're gonna see all different types of builds in this gameplay. You're gonna to see Tonic on his 6-9 metric playing the two. You're gonna see me on my seven footer playing the big man spot. You're gonna see the other team has another the seven footer as well versatile paint me same title as me and everything but again not to get off topic i want to come back to the big man discussion now the big man is a very touchy topic it really depends on what the meta is in terms of what is good for you to run so for instance let me just kind of break this down and explain to you guys i'm gonna just completely distract myself from the gameplay while i make this point so what really depends on the big man meta is essentially 
Is there a need for interior defense? Well, the need for interior defense depends on how many bigs are, are you running into on 2v2, 3v3, all types of stuff like that. The, and the need for rebounding depends on what other people are doing for rebounding. So if the trend becomes to get taller bigs out there on the 2v2 court or the 3v3 court, you're going to see more people need to bring taller bigs on the 2v2 and 3v3 court. Like if you're constantly running into a seven foot three and you're a six, nine playing the big man spot on 3v3, you're going to be getting constantly snagged on. Like I understand, yes, the whole vertical discussion and just like all types of, yes, I still have decent rebound on a six, nine metric and stuff like that. It's still a thing, but you're going to deal with rebounding struggles, whether you're, whether you're not, you like it when you're playing a seven, three or a seven footer consistently, or at least especially people who know what they're doing with it. So again, to come back to that discussion, when it comes to the big man meta, I think it depends on what people is what's like trendy to give an example. So again, I think that when you see more people pop out here on taller bigs, you're going to get more frustrated with it when you have the six, nine metrics out here. Again, also, I think more speed is going to be really nice to have at the two spot. You're going to see tonic on this build right here. I don't know that the six, nine metric is really that good of a lockdown build anymore at the two. <laughs> you don't exactly have elite speed. Whether your point guard can guard PGs is a really different discussion, but honestly, kitchen on this five, nine build right here. And sorry if this video is off topic and it's kind of just flying around everywhere. I have a lot of thoughts in my mind and honestly, I'm just trying to kind of explain them in video form while the gameplay is also still popping up. But you can see Kitchen going crazy on ball with that stuff. Now, these guys go to their two. If they had it in the point guard's hands, we were going to still have Kitchen guard him. Now, this guy right here ends up just passing it to Kitchen. It is what it is. They get a free board off this. Tonic just kind of crashes down, trying to get the reach in, and then we get the rebound. But I want to talk about how Kitchen can still very manageably guard their other team's PG. This also kind of comes down to stick, though, and whether your team can deal with that or not. So, I, as a hedge defender right here, you know, see, I, I still like doing this stuff. I still like the idea of me and Kitchen guarding pick and roll defense, but at the same time, I'm perfectly cool with Tonic as a six foot nine guarding the PNR as well. And me on the seven footer, I'm super versatile with it. I can either play full hedge defense for the smaller guard who clearly can't switch onto the big man, or I could just play full switch defense and switch onto the guard when Tonic wants to. The list goes on and on. It's still very doable. Right here again, you're going to see we seal the box out. Tonic's able to get the rebound at the six foot nine position right here, though. <laughs> Honestly, it's just kind of a free board for them. This this is not a really good situation for us in general but anyway again i do think i would really vouch very hard for you guys hopping on the seven foot build that i have right here if you already made it or if you still have a six nine metric i think it's still a good build i'm not gonna lie though we all know that the value behind that was really the hall of fame interceptor I think that's really, really what was so elite about it was you can be so tall and still have such value when it comes to the passing lanes, still be so fast and so good at like all types of versatility when it comes to defense, everything from perimeter to interior, which that's still good at. But the really driving factor in what made that build so valuable was passing lanes. And honestly, it doesn't feel the same anymore. I feel like to an extent, bronze and silver and like builds like mine, I feel like I'm doing better on the lanes than I ever did before. But on the 6'9", I feel like it's so, so bad. So long story short, I'm not trying to sit here and say bronze and silver is better than Hall of Fame now. I'm just trying to say that from what bronze and silver was originally before the patch, I feel like it's better now. And when I say bronze and silver, I mean builds that can only get bronze and silver. So like for instance, me having 75 steel rating and silver interceptor. I feel so much better now than I did on before patch in terms of this build's ability to play passing lanes. And I feel way worse on the 6-9 metric that had the Hall of Fame interceptor and 90 steel rating. Again, you can see we, we hit him with the fake pass again. This is a really elite move if anybody wants to try it out for the pick and roll offense. If you come out here, you can't pump fake when you do this. If you're moving forward and you tap X, it's going to make you dunk. It's going to go up with this because it thinks you're driving and you can't pump fake a driving dunk. It just doesn't work like that. So if you ever want to hit this, all you have to do is just hit a fake pass and it will stop your motion entirely. And then you can go up right away because they're going to jump for that chase down sometimes. And you can absolutely call their bluff on it. Simple as that. So long story short, I understand this video was kind of all over the place. I just wanted to get all my thoughts out there, even if it's in a scattered way. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And overall, let's just give my full recap on this as we just look at the box score right here. So how do I feel about the big man spot? I feel like this has been influenced quite a bit. I think you're going to see a lot of taller bigs pop out here again. I think it makes a lot of sense for that to be the case because the only thing that was really the driving force of this build, the 6-9 metric that Tonic has playing the big man spot was the fact that you could dominate the game from a perimeter perspective or play with a Hall of Fame interceptor and go crazy with it. It does still have like hall, like gold clamps and stuff like that and it's still very manageable in terms of its perimeter defense being really high as well. So it's still a good backside defender. It's just the rebounding is really questionable 
role, to be honest. I feel like the pick and roll offense is a different story. If you run a lot of ISO on 3v3 or 2v2, it's still a very manageable build. But if you like pick and roll or pick and pop with it, I think it definitely is making a lot of sense to go back to seven footers and seven threes. In terms of the lockdown spot, don't be wrong, I still think the 6'9 metric is pretty solid, but I do think you're going to see a little bit of a resurgence in terms of the 6'5s and stuff like that. So like the point guard build that Kitchen had at the one spot in 2v2, that build essentially is what I think is going to be really, really good at the two in 3v3 instead of like the point guard spot. And then at the PGs, I think you're still going to see small PGs like the 5'9s and stuff like that if they're really good. But you might just see a complete ISO meta, to be honest with you guys, or the ball movement, three out kind of offense where everybody can just kind of move around because you now you can pass it kind of freelance and all willy-nilly and stuff like that so honestly you might see like small pgs like six footers to six ones or something like that and then combined with maybe a six three or a to six five at the two and then maybe you have a six nine to seven footer at the big man spot if you come out here with a seven three i think it's still viable but you do still need a little bit more mobility than that if you ask me i think your hedge defense needs to be really good in terms of your speed and how far you can kind of cover on the court as well as if you get switched into the iso defense if you're running with a taller build at the two like tonic has right here and me and him can just play full switch and my build is so versatile and so nice on the perimeter d with it i really feel like i can just guard anybody in the iso with this to be honest and it really does feel pretty nice so honestly i will say i think this patch brought a lot of balance to the game but for those people who made brand new builds like the six nine metrics i would be very irritated if i were you i feel it myself i have two of them and honestly it is a bit irritating i feel like it definitely debilitates the one thing about the build that was super super good but at the same time should it have ever been in the game i don't know that's a story for a different day i still do think though they're going a little bit overboard with whole with the whole patching defense in this game like honestly the game is already like super underpowered when it comes to defense if you ask me and now they're kind of just adding to it even more passing lanes were the one thing that we kind of had going for us as defenders but it is what it is we kind of just have to suck it up and just play your actual on ball d i know some people are going to think that's so corny for me to say and just be like oh yeah you should have been been having to do that the whole time bro shut up <laughs> just stop <laughs> the game's offense is so overpowered it's really not even funny it's not really that bad compared to either of the 2k21 games though next gen and current gen were both complete garbage so honestly defense is still playable it's very like okay in this game i'd give it like a five out of ten or maybe like a four and a half out of ten at this point with the passing lanes it's probably like a six and a half out of ten if you ask me that's how i felt about it but anyway, that's off video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties, all that good stuff. And like always, try some more than 1,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put seven in the comments to George Portsman all the way through, or just put whatever build you think is going to be working out the best. Let me hear what you guys want to say in the comments in terms of how this affects the meta, how you feel about it. I understand some people are going to laugh about this and be like, oh, well, the fact that it even affects what you're doing in the first place just shows that you weren't even good in the in the first place either. Listen, bro, the game is going to have all different types of tides and highs and lows in terms of what builds are elite and what builds are the meta. And just because you're playing on a meta build doesn't mean that you're cheesing, if you ask me. I think people just are doing what it takes to be the best, honestly. That's how I feel. And don't even get started with me. If someone's sitting here telling me that I'm over here a meta hopper or something like that, and I'm just hopping on to whatever is the best, I'm over here on six foot six builds with 25 three-pointer what are you even talking about if you're over here sitting here in my comments talking about that stuff bro <laughs> it's crazy to talk also if you will see the win percentage it has been increased from 90.7 to 90.9 so in terms of me having played a thousand six hundred or a thousand seven hundred games that ha that is quite an increase like for me winning my win rate after this patch has been going through the roof so hey man think what you want i really don't care at the end of the day i'm gonna use whatever build i think is gonna be the most fun for me to play i'm probably gonna hop around on the six foot nine metric the seven footer the seven three all different types of stuff like that i might even use the six foot seven here and there and have tonic hop out on a seven three popper and play the big man spot with my six foot seven so anyway like i said that's off video hope you all enjoyed seven footer out here going crazy on the standing dunks the elite contact dunks are crazy too bro it's actually really fire if this build had 84 driving dunk honestly it'd be over bro this would be so so nasty and again still getting ghost contest as i just literally run into the dude's face and don't actually put my hands up this is one little tip as well that i want to give you guys if you're playing as a hedge defender this is the way to play defense i'm not sitting here saying it's a good thing in 2k it's really stupid if you ask me but this is what allows me to kind of make up the fact that i have a small pg he can't switch on to this big man at all you can't afford to put your hands up right here because tonic tonic also played the lane as well to the corner in case he did like a bailout pass but again this is what allows us to get two bodies on that if it went long to my side or went long like to the middle i could have got the rebound and i'm still getting a hand in there as well as i'm getting back to the big man as the shot is in the air and kitchen can get back to the guard so again 
I just want to vouch really hard for the way that I just play D right there. And again, it, like this build still has all the mobility to play pick and roll offense, has great rebounding as well. Still a really good ISO defender. The list goes on and on. This is honestly, I was already leaning toward this build in the first place. I liked it a lot, but I just had to really hop on the 6 9 for the sake of passing lanes. And it also was a cool little aspect that I could add in my game as well that it would be a little bit more mobile, could have some driving contact dunks as well. Would have been pretty fun just to, in general, like play like that a little bit, a little bit more ball handle and versatility and stuff like that. But anyway. Again, that's all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub if you're new to our notice, all that good stuff. Like I said, if you made it to the end of the video, put seven in the comments to show your support. But other than that, take it easy, man. Peace.